the RuneScape Tactical Nuke. A weapon made up not of items, but noobs. Nine newbie accounts use the Retribution Prayer to deal unavoidable damage as they die. Anyone in the blast radius gets deleted. In my first video, I introduced the concept and I slayed gold farmers in the Rev Caves. For part two, I took the nuke to its limit. Rather than targeting low-level players in the wilderness, I scaled up. I expanded the nuke with an additional 60 accounts and used them to one-shot one of the biggest, baddest bosses in the game the corporeal beast. I was blown away when it worked. I spent days grinding accounts without even knowing if success was a possibility, and it paid off exactly as I had hoped. But after some time passed, I was left with one burning question. How the f do I follow that up? Well, honestly, you don't. So I decided to give up on PVM with the nuke, and instead head back oh, to the wilderness. Here we go again. But this time, I wouldn't be using my trusty Retribution, and I wouldn't be taking out level 50s and 60s. It was time to aim higher. Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Raycon's wireless earbuds offer you great sound with a price starting at half that of other premium audio brands. Raycon earbuds boast six solid hours of playtime, a convenient magnetic charging case, and seamless Bluetooth pairing. In the time it takes me to pop open the case and get the earbuds into my ear, they are already paired and good to go. If you're worried about comfort or fit, Raycon has you covered. Their earbuds come with a bunch of different fit options so you can find the most comfortable way to listen. Raycon's compact, noise-isolating fit makes them perfect for deep reflection and contemplation. Really? Another nuke RuneScape at the age of 26? Grow up. Why didn't I iron my hoodie before shooting this? Is that an ice cream van? Ooh. Furthermore, a bunch of celebrities love Raycon earbuds. You've got Cardib, Quavo, Al, and even Padidi. And the best part is that Raycon have a 45-day returns policy, so you can give them a try risk-free. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com forward slash goody to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Go grab yourself a pair and see what you think. The goal of the nuke was always to one-shot a player or monster with unavoidable damage. Once the nuke is detonated, there should be nothing but luck which can save the victim. And per account, the nuke 3 was going to be the most powerful to date. I set out to create 8 accounts, all with the ability to use the Lunar Spell Vengeance. Vengeance is a spell on the Lunar Spellbook which requires level 94 magic to cast. When active, it reflects 75% of the first hit you receive straight back to the player or monster who dealt it. Combined with a Ring of Recoil, an account can reflect 85% of the damage they take straight back at the player or monster who dealt it. The plan was simple. I take my eight accounts capable of casting Vengeance, and I stack them all on the same spot. I Venge up, and then I get an unsuspecting PKer to cast an Ice Barrage on those accounts, hitting all of them for up to 30 damage. The moment that the Barrage is cast, there would be nothing that the PKer could do to survive. The PKer will be dealt with up to 200 damage from Vengeance and Recoils. Prayer, Armor, Defense, all of it would be useless. That was the plan for the nuke 3, and it had the chance to be the most deadly and versatile nuke yet, but there was a long road ahead if I wanted to make it a reality. My previous nukes had taken a fair amount of time and money, but the Venge nuke was on an entirely different level. I had two major requirements to hit, level 94 magic and access to the Lunar Spellbook. Getting 94 magic was the simpler of the two, but simple doesn't mean fast or cheap. The only way I could realistically get such a high level on eight accounts at once was through splashing. I consulted the wiki and found that it would take roughly 160 hours to get from level one magic to level 94. That was a big number, but the numbers were only gonna get bigger from there. I totted up the runes which I would need and came up with 28k death runes, 28.5k blood runes, and 129k wrath runes per account. Across all eight of the accounts, that was going to cost me about 450 mil. 160 hours and 450 mil. Not great, not terrible. But that was only the first half of the equation. 
Unlocking the Lunar Spellbook meant completing Lunar Diplomacy, and that meant lots and lots of stat and quest requirements. 55 woodcutting, 61 crafting, 49 firemaking, 60 mining, just to list a few. And completing quests like Fremenic Trial, Shiloh Village, and Lunar Diplomacy itself wasn't going to be a walk in the park on eight accounts at once either. My best guess was that the whole grind from zero to Lunars would take somewhere in the range of 50 to 60 hours. All of this added up to one of the biggest grinds I had ever faced. I was hesitant to commit once I realized the scope of the grind, but I decided to bite the bullet. I registered eight accounts and ran them through Tutorial Island. And the second my boys hit the mainland, I set my sights on vengeance. Day one was simple. I trained woodcutting. I decided to stay free to play until I had everything I could do in free to play finished. Woodcutting was the easiest on the list, so by the morning of day two, I had level 55. For the rest of day two, I got through my first quests. Doric's Quest and Imp Catcher, followed by getting a start on crafting. And day three is where things started to get tedious because it was time to take on mining and fire making. For mining, I got to level 30 and I did it mining iron. Believe it or not, it wasn't that bad. Fire making, on the other hand, was awful. I was forced to train the accounts one at a time. So the bulk of day three and day four were consumed by it. But as day four came to a close, I hit 49 on all of the accounts and I would never need to touch a tinderbox again. By day five, I was approaching the end of my free to play goals. I finished off 46 crafting, leaving the last 15 levels for faster methods once I became a member. I also completed Rune Mysteries, which was the last quest I planned to do in free to play. A couple of busy days later, I finally returned to the game to finish off my final free to play stat grind, Defense. I trained Defense AFK at the Monastery on every account at the same time. It was really slow, about 2k XP an hour, but it was also very easy to AFK. By the time I hit level 27 Defense, I was bored and I had exhausted all of my free to play options. The time for membership had arrived, and I could not wait to get going. Once I was a member, I had only one thing in mind. Fremenic Trials. I hit the last remaining stat requirement, 25 Fletching, and I started the quest right away. The Fremi Trials would go on to consume almost two full days of my time to complete, and that was mostly because I made a massive mistake. I completed the quest with one attack and one strength. I thought that I would be returning to monks to train to 40 defense AFK, and I didn't want to use any other training spots. That meant that killing the Drogon and Koshi the Undead took hours upon hours rather than only a few minutes per account. The rest of the quest was business as usual for questing on multiple accounts. Once I had the quest complete, I didn't actually talk to the NPC to finish the quest. Instead, I saved the reward so that I could go back to monks and train defense, but I actually never did. With Fremi Trials out of the way, I finished off day 10 by getting level 40 ranged. I did this by completing Dwarf Cannon and then AFK Cannoning. With 40 ranged, I could use Van Braces, and with Van Braces, I could splash. By the time that day 10 rolled around, I was ready to take on the single biggest grind outside of magic, mining. I needed level 60. Doing this with iron the normal way would take almost 50 hours because I would have to train each account individually. 50 hours isn't that much when I had 160 ahead of splashing, but splashing and mining iron are vastly different activities. I was so desperate to find a more AFK method that I even considered power mining pure essence. As cool as it would have been to use such a method, it turned out it would only be marginally better than mining iron. In the end, I settled on the motherload mine. Instead of depositing pay dirt, I just dropped it. This made it much more AFK than mining iron, and it meant that the XP per hour per account, even when I was on all eight at once, was around 20k. But still, it wasn't exactly fast. It took me two full days to finish it off, and around 20 hours of playtime. It wasn't fun, but it was definitely satisfying to know that I saved almost 30 hours by choosing the motherload mine over iron. With mining out of the way, I had very few stat grinds which remained. I needed 25 thieving, but instead of training it manually, I completed the knight's sword, followed by tourist trap. Next up was Druidic Ritual and Jungle Potion, and both were very easy and very uneventful. On day 13, I completed the Lost City, and then turned my focus back to defense. I needed level 40, and my original plan was to do this at Monks, but when I realized how much time it would take, I decided to quest most of the experience instead. I cashed in my Fremi Trials reward and got a bunch of levels. After that, I completed Olaf's Quest. Olaf's Quest gave me 12,000 more defense experience, bringing me extremely close to level 40. To finish it off, I geared up my guys and headed to the rock crabs. And after a couple of short hours, I was done. With the fence out of the way, only three requirements remained. Shiloh Village, 61 Crafting, and 65 Magic. 
I got Shiloh Village out of the way on the same day, leaving all of day 14 for crafting. And finally, right after I crossed two weeks since I created the accounts, it was time to start splashing. I set the accounts up in Clan Wars, splashing on each other. And this was exactly how I planned to spend the next two weeks of my life, as I splashed to 94 Mage. By day 16, I'd hit level 65 Magic, and that meant it was finally time to take on Lunar Diplomacy. The quest was a breeze. It was fairly long and I had to do the dream sequence one account at a time, but it all took me about half a day. And knowing that it was the only thing I had to do other than get the magic level, I was plenty motivated to make my way through. A few hours after I entered the dream world on the first account, my final account was snapped back to reality. I logged all of them back in and ran south to collect my reward the Lunar Spellbook. 16 long days after I created my accounts, I had finally completed the first of my two major goals. All that was standing between me and the realized Vengenuke was over 150 hours of magic. And that meant it was time to splash. I set my guys up in Clan Wars White Portal and I readied myself for two of the most uneventful weeks of my life. Every day I would wake up bright and early and I would log in right away. And then I would kill time. Over the first few days, I went as hard as I possibly could. I clocked several 18 hour days back to back and even exceeded 24 hours straight on one of them. The levels racked up faster than I expected and in no time at all, I hit 1 million XP, 2 million, 3 million, 4. The number just kept getting bigger. My choice of fashionscape went a long way to cure my boredom. With the constant flow of people coming into the white portal, I had hundreds of people who would come over and freak out. Some of them ended up being pretty hostile, like one guy who reported me to Sir Pugger. And I loved it, but this had an unintended consequence. Seven days into the splashing grind, I was at almost 6 million experience out of my 8 million experience goal. And seven days into the splashing grind, one of my accounts got hit with a permanent ban. Your account- What? You just got banned? Your account Wait, you has just... been disabled. What? No way. Wow. Permanently banned, macroing major, not appealable. Is this going to happen every time I make a few accounts at once? Permanently banned. Permanently banned. And no, for those of you wondering, I did not bot. I wasn't about to risk hundreds of mil and over 100 hours of progress to avoid an already fairly easy grind. The Venge Nuke was an idea that I had dreamed about doing for over a year. And right as I was approaching the finish line after sinking so much time and money into it, I got falsely banned. And worst of all, I couldn't even appeal it. And when I saw that, I panicked. I knew I only really had one choice. I needed to use my Jagex connections to get unbanned. I needed Mod Archie. So I called Chris right away. Chris, something really bad has happened. I've been falsely banned for botting. Fuck, Ronin! Are you serious? I know, I know. It's hard to believe, Chris, but I am serious. And I need you to get the ban lifted ASAP. All right, hang on, hold tight. One Chris, sec. please hurry. Just one sec. Hang on. Moments later, the ban was lifted. I don't know what Chris did, but it worked. Thank you, Chris. Do you have anything you want to say for the video? Leave a like, thanks, and aside from that, I'll see you next time. With the ban quashed, the grind continued, and I didn't waste a moment. I burnt through almost a million Wrath runes in just over a week, and one by one, the accounts started to hit 94 magic. Almost a month after I originally created the accounts, the grind was finally over, and now it was time for the real challenge to begin. I had everything I needed to test the Venge Nuke out, and the first place I went was the wilderness. I had no grand plan, I was just gonna dump the accounts all on the same spot, Venge up, and then hide them in the Ring of Stone. And then I was just gonna wait. Oh my- No! I don't know which one he attacked. <laughs> Is he at- Oh my god. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh my god. I still got him! Oh! Oh my god! 
The first attempt was a failure, but it wasn't all bad news. The guy who attacked me was a pure and his magic gear was pretty bad. You can see that on the first hit, he takes a ton of damage. Then on the second hit, he takes a ton more damage from three additional Avengers, which didn't get triggered. And if he hadn't splashed, he would have been dead for sure. If I wanted the Venge Nuke to reach its full potential, I needed a new setup. A setup which would give me the best odds of people always hitting their barrages. My original gear was basically just a full set of plate armor. This provided me with a magic defense bonus of negative 12, but that number needed to go lower. After a bit of wikiing, I found a few more items which would help, but one in particular would be an enormous buff. The Berserker necklace alone has a magic defense bonus of negative 20, and with that change made, I was certain that the new setup would work. So I went straight back out. The perfect target logged in, a guy who I actually got killed by when I was doing the chin bomb and I was ready to get some revenge. Oh, they're using Blitz! Oh my God, they did it and I got him! That was beautiful. The guy thought he was casting an ice barrage, but actually he was casting the world's fastest home teleport. He was gone in an instant. Excited by the first kill, I spent a few more hours hanging about until someone else showed up. And eventually a level 79 pure appeared. And in his own words, he really wanted to try. He's, oh, he's blitzed, you absolute coward. Bring him back, bring the boy bring back. Bring him back. He <gasps> went for the barrage. It's Did over. I, he's down, it's oh over. my God. <laughs> the nuke was fully operational. And now that the damage was there, it was time to perfect the strategy. The plan I came up with was this. I set my nuke accounts up in the first square of multi in 54 wilderness. Then I dress my main up as an Iron Man or someone who looks like a good loot. And on my main, I kill hellhounds until I catch the attention of a PKer. If it's a skull tricker, I fall for the skull trick. And then I lead them to my accounts. I stand my main next to the stack of nuke accounts. And when the PKer throws a barrage, the nuke gets triggered. And with this strategy in place, the nuke was complete. I've been frozen. He's, got, he's coming for you. Good, good, good. Now he'll try and freeze you again. He should. Oh. Yes. Go, oh my go. god. Did I get him? Yes. From full. Amazing. Weeks and weeks of grinding, hundreds of hours of work, and it finally went off without a hitch. Come on. Splash. Did I get him? I got him, oh my god. By the time the barrage was on the way, he was already heading back to Mage Bank, but it was too late. My first loot had been secured and it wasn't even bad. Again, an extremely high level PKer taken down from full to nothing. For once, everything was going to plan. And that was when I encountered my first Skull Tricker. Oh my God, he is, he's, he's Skull Tricking me. <laughs> now run. <laughs> he's like, oh my God, we got him. Restore up, restore up. Dude, he's gonna go for it. He's gonna be so overzealous to go for this. He is. He's gonna be freaking the fuck out. Please don't catch a freeze. Oh, I got hit by the hell hand. This pray is... melee, pray melee, pray melee now. Because I can just stand on the square and then he's gonna catch me. It's over. Oh. They don't know yet. He doesn't know yet. He doesn't know yet. Hey. Just, just keep praying melee. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, restore. Restore. This is it. Oh my god. No, please don't go for the blister. He's, he's dead. It's over! Yes! Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, man. A little while later, I was approached by another obvious skull trick. As I'd planned, I fell for it. And sure enough, a second after I did, a max combat PKer logged right on in.
there's still a chance. Did I get him? <gasps> oh my god. As powerful as the nuke was, luck was always going to play a role. If the barrage lands and doesn't deal much damage, or splashes and doesn't hit several of the accounts, the PKer can survive. I've got him! Yes, you got him, you got him. He's not dead. Damn, he just didn't hit hard enough. Holy crap. There's no way. I can make it in one from here. Did I get him? Oh my god! I can't believe that! Oh, my heart was racing! That guy has so much risk. Oh, dude, he had such insane gear on. How did he splash? That was by far the lowest point of the whole nuking process. I'd spent days hunting for PKs at this point, and this was the first time that someone with really big risk actually appeared and attacked me. But there's not much you can do about getting bad RNG. But I knew if I persisted, eventually I would get a bigger loot. Oh my god, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 I might have a guy. Oh my god. Do you think he's trying to skull trick? No, I, I think he's just trying to kill me. I made it. Do we have him? Yes! Yes! Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Did you see what he said as he died? Yes, I did. That was perfect. Another person? Get somebody out there to anti PK. Oh, oh my god. He's got a fucking arcane. <gasps> yes! I don't think... He split. Oh, no, he didn't. I don't think that... Um, Man, I'm even going to be able to get away. Ray Melly. Hit him. It doesn't matter. I already hit this guy hit once. Him. Two of them run away? Yep, keep Ray Melly on. Oh my god. <gasps> oh my god. It's over. Oh, oh my god. Let's go. go. Oh, Blue Blessed Spears and Toxic Stab. Let's Blue, fucking Blue, go. Get ready to log out. I'm getting, getting ready. ready to log out. Oh, Fury. Open the, open the, open the oh, logout screen. Oh, Sir Bumzo. Open, open the logout screen. Open the logout screen. Open the logout screen. Be ready. You got Dude, I'm ready. Oh you got all the main stuff. You got all the main stuff. I'm gone. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Let's go, dude. Let's fucking die. The nuke was better than I had ever anticipated. It took hundreds of hours and cost hundreds of mil to execute as a solo player, but that absurd time and money sink resulted in some of the most fun I've ever had playing the game. I am not a good PKer, but I do love PK. And getting a sneaky one-up on these PKs who are, without a doubt, better than me at the game. That was a great feeling. My total loot was somewhere in the region of 25 mil. That doesn't even cover the cost of half of one of the accounts. But who cares? Profit was never the motive. Nor was it ever a possibility. I was over 200 hours and 450 mil in the hole. Was it worth it? To quote our friend Yoshi Boy, yes.